think that we are in a very unique position today um, in Africa where we get to leapfrog urban development uh, compared to older uh, cities around the world. But we have a lot of new cities that will, that will be popping up around Africa and many of these cities will be very, very large cities. And we have an opportunity to leapfrog in terms of sustainability and uh, in terms of environmental and social sustainability. Um, Eco Atlantic, for example, we've been able to uh, apply a lot of the latest ecology when it comes to green buildings or green city um, technology um, and applying it to the city in Lagos. And this allows us to leapfrog a lot, a lot of emerging cities around the world and also set a new standard of what emerging cities could look like uh, in terms of environmental uh, so we're inviting a lot of our developers to build green buildings. A couple of our developers uh, ended up getting IFC Edge certification, which allows for uh, resource uh, efficiency. What that does for the city is it creates a more resilient city uh, because we consume less resources, so less electricity, less water, and that makes us more resilient uh, in a world in a fast-growing uh, population. How can the private sector do city? Well, this is something we've been uh, we've been implementing in the past few years, uh, having uh, social and environmental impact initiatives with some of our companies, and we see that as an opportunity to enhance uh, our businesses rather than see them as a challenge. It's forcing us to think outside the box and seeing how can we add more benefits to the to the communities around our businesses at different locations. Um, whether we're talking about reforestation in uh, projects in Togo or um, boreholes in villages. Um, we are currently setting a couple of initiatives in Eco Atlantic uh, on the educational side, which will have a bigger impacts in Lagos as a whole. It is now becoming part of our DNA, and we believe that this is actually a very important thing that the private sector can then do. Private sector should be venturing out in different directions, should be opening up to different initiatives. In our case, it's basically adding those initiatives to our different projects, which improves the environment in any case. And when the environment improves, everyone benefits from that. That's one aspect of it. Uh, another aspect is as the city, where as we're pushing a lot of green initiatives, for example, that is helping set new standards or bring new technologies to the market, um, which then which then also over time gets adopted more broadly um, throughout the city or throughout even the country. As a key player from the private sector, what have been your some major challenges you've encountered at Eco Atlantic towards uh, achieving that goal of sustainability? Uh, interestingly enough, it didn't feel like a challenge in the sense that setting st the green standards for the city, for example, it just got us to actually find more solutions and better solutions that are actually improving the quality of life or the quality uh, of construction in the city. So it's for us more of an opportunity than a challenge because the more we end up, our buildings are efficient, the, the more economic benefits we will get. But at the same time, it is an improvement for the environment as a whole, and it's also making us a lot more resilient. So it, it is an interesting thing because it could be perceived as challenging, whereas it actually is an opportunity. And this is something that as technology gets more and more affordable, uh, more and more businesses would be benefit from implementing um, sustainable technologies. What are some difficulties uh, faced? Because at the start you were saying that you're leapfrogging, you're starting something that has not been done before. There is a bit of a learning curve, but it doesn't feel like a very steep learning curve. It's just basically imp by implementing the right systems and the right training, we are able to adopt new technologies fairly fast. If we were to say, let's say a challenge, it is a bit of a learning curve, but we don't see that as, uh, as a burden because once we learn it, then we can apply it throughout multiple companies and it becomes a second nature for us. Okay. Well, working in, in different countries, what is one project you are the most proud of? Eco Atlantic definitely is uh, a big pride for us. Um, we managed to stop coastal erosion uh, and protect Victoria Island, uh, which is the business district of Lagos which was a, under severe threat of coastal erosion back in 2005. It taught us a lot on coastal 
uh, erosion and coastal protection, which is going to be a very big challenge over the next few de decades uh, throughout the continent, but also worldwide. On that one, there was a steep learning curve, um, but it got us to become experts in the field, and it's something that we are very, very proud of. Have you been working or have you found it in the Atlantic? Close to two decades. It's, it's, uh, we're close to two decades. And now we just moved into our new headquarters just a couple of months ago. And just operating out of Eco Atlantic feels radically different. It's a very different environment. And we believe that this is going to be a game changer uh, for the whole region. I was asking, would you say that this is a, a part of the market, your, your type of companies that will expand in the future in Africa, for example? More, more specifically. We, we've been heavily invested in the region for the longest time and we intend on keep on uh, investing heavily in the region and expanding in the region because this is home. This is where we know how to operate. This is where we see major opportunities of growth. As I said earlier, the potential to leapfrog into um, and set new standards globally. Thank you for your time, Mr. Shakuri. Thank you very much.